Vanakam, Dia Do It, and Onion Haseo. Hey, it's Tom from Green Shorts. And today, I'm gonna paint the outside of the shed. And that's big because this is the last step I'm gonna do in this project before I move on to the next one. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna stain the deck. And I'm gonna treat the front edge of the wood with Shashugi Bond. This is also the most difficult part for me in a project is the final touches because my brain is so motivated to get started on the next thing that it's hard for me to focus on this thing. So I'm going to make myself do this even if I have to write down each step and only think about that. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. One thing I can do to help myself here is to tidy up a little bit. I think a clean space in here is going to clean up my mind a little bit as well. I've had a couple of heavy rains since I put in the deck. The concrete diversion wall is actually working. I can kind of see how the water has flowed across the front here and around this corner. So I'm happy to see that doing its job. Another thing I can do to help my brain stay focused is a cooking term, mise en place, which means everything in its place. So I'm gonna make sure that I have all of my supplies and tools right here ready to go. Train's here. I had an interesting comment that gave me a little bit of a hard time for using Shaoshugi Bomb, which is a sustainable method of wood protection and then hitting it with spray paint to cover the gaps, which is probably not the most sustainable. Even though I was using uh, leftover spray paint, I agree with that assessment. They suggested that I could have just used my torch uh, to hit those uh, light spots and darken them up with fire. I didn't even think about that. But it did give me the idea of treating the window trim with Shashugi Bond, and I can do that because I've got concrete siding, which isn't gonna catch fire. Although I will need to be careful because the sill on that is actually made out of tough board, which is plastic. Thanks for the suggestion and the exhortation. Constructive criticism accepted. I'm gonna prep this area by pulling the screen out and taping up the tough board down here on the sill. The fire doesn't have to hit this wood long to give it that charred look and I think a couple layers of tape will protect the plastic tough board. This tough board was actually some of the cribbing used when my the windows were transported for my house construction. Of course I held on to that for a project like this. It mostly protected it. I'm gonna hit that with some black paint anyway, so that little bit of melt isn't gonna show up. Although I only had two layers on this side, hopefully three layers makes a difference over here. Alright, now I'm out of the danger zone with the plastic. Finish this up. This is gonna make an incredible accent against the gray background and be a nice tie-in to my Shashugiban column. I am gonna complete the look with 
some paint for plastic since I've got plastic. While I'm shashugi bonding, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the front edge of the deck wood here. If I keep the flame low enough, it should just blacken the sides and not the top of the wood. That's beautiful. Obviously a propane torch is a great way to do shashugiban. It's time to paint. I'm gonna go back to my exterior gray. Trains here. old sanding sponge has seen better days but I'm gonna just wrap a piece of sandpaper around it to make use of the flat surface Because this is a reclaimed door, I'm not sure if that paint has lead in it. And I didn't test it, so I'm gonna take an extra precaution here and mask up.
Something my mother taught me about painting doors is that you always want the brush stroke to go with the long axis of the wood. Most likely that's the way that the wood grain would have gone. So you're going with the grain with your brush strokes versus against it. You can always put the paint on however you want and then just that final stroke with the paintbrush, put that grain on. I'd used the center door for a screen in my basement and it already had a coat of paint on it. There is some chipping in the underlying paint. I'm gonna take the worst of the chips off. I'm also gonna take care to get as many of these paint chips as I can and put them in the trash, just in case they do contain lead. This door has some squeeze out of the adhesive around all of the windows, which is probably why a brand new door had ended up at a reuse center. So I'm gonna quickly use a razor blade and get all that out. Painting windows is one of those things that can be tedious with all the angles and trim and something you just gotta get through. But I'm almost done. <laughs> but you can look at tasks like this and putting excellence into them as something that builds grit. That's how I'm looking at it. Now it's time to paint the beam. I'm actually gonna spray the rafters later. I think there's just too many nooks and crannies and nails coming through to roll this and brush it. So I'm gonna finish up this paint job with the beam. All right, one last tedious, I mean, grit building opportunity, which is to use a razor blade to clean up these windows.
put this in the satisfying category. These windows will need a good cleaning, of course, inside and out. There's just one more thing to do. Stay in the deck. I've got some transparent water-based deck stain that I found in the Oops paint section of my local Home Depot. It's actually gray, but it's a slightly warmer gray than I'd like. Because it's water-based, I can mix some of the gray latex that I'm using to move this color a little closer to the gray on the building. I definitely don't want it as dark, but I would prefer to have it just a little cooler. I am gonna need to take a little volume out of this can. <laughs> Definitely in the color family of my dark gray. Bellissima. This color is going to soak in a little bit, but I'm not going to make you watch the paint dry because we all know what that's like. I love how the Shao Shugibon column is set off from the gray. And how the window opening and the front edge of the deck are nice complements to that. I still have the door hardware to figure out. And I think the double door will need a handle in the middle. I am super happy with this project as far as I've taken it in this phase. I know I do have a whole can of that stain now. <laughs> but I think I'm going to use it for the floor on the inside and maybe even the rafters. If you're just coming to this series right now, this is the last video I'm going to do right now. I'm going to come back in the winter and work on the interior. Special thanks to my patrons and members for helping make these videos possible. I really do appreciate the support and the vote of confidence. I also really appreciate all of you who are active in the comments. Uh, great feedback, great suggestions, encouragement, and I get a lot of ideas there as well. Constructive criticism is welcome too. I'm still learning and I'm still teachable even at 50. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green. And this project is green because the only new materials I used on it were the nails and screws. Everything else was reclaimed materials. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next Saturday.